In the problem, a rod of mass m rests on a cylinder with mass m. The rod is inclined at 45 degree angle. The bottom of the rod is pivoted and the top end is infinitesimally close to the wall. So it is not touching the wall. Similarly, the cylinder is infinitesimally close to the ground but does not touch it. So cylinder is not touching this ground. What is the minimum coefficient of friction between the rod and the cylinder? that allows the system to be static. So static means it should be in equilibrium, net force and net torque on the rod and cylinder must be zero. Assume that there is sufficient friction between the cylinder and the wall. Let us make the free diagram, free word diagram first. On cylinder, forces are mg, which pass through its center of mass. One normal reaction from this wall and it will tend to slide down so friction is like this so these frictions and normal reactions are from the walls now from this contact this normal reaction and this normal reaction will again pass through the center and since it is tend to slide down so friction on this cylinder will be like this let's say this is f1 so f1 and n1 are contact forces at these contacts now let us make the free word diagram of uh, this rod on rod the action reaction pair this will be n1 and this is f1 from symmetry of the diagram we can see this is isosceles triangle and this is the in circle so this should be the midpoint of this rod and mg of this rod will pass through this point only so this is mg and mass for both cylinder and rod are equal now let us make the equations for this static equilibrium first equation i am writing for this rod and there are also the forces from this pivot also let us uh, show them this is the y component of pivot force and let's say this is the x component of pivot force nx and ny if you take torque about this point then torque due to nx and ny will be zero and this friction will also pass through this point so torque due to friction is also zero so net torque on this rod about pivot this would be equal to zero so torque will be due to this mg and this n1 if length of this is equal to l then this is l by 2 let us take this is l1 and this is also l1 so torque due to normal reaction is n1 into l1 and torque due to this mg so component of mg in this direction will be I am taking this torque as minus since due to normal torque is in this direction clockwise I am taking this clockwise direction as positive and due to no mg torque will be anti-clockwise I am taking this anti-clockwise as negative so this will be component of mg since this angle is 45 so this will be mg by root 2 multiplied by L so from this equation we can find n1 and n1 is mg by root 2 so this is our equation number 1 <coughs> now coming to this cylinder on cylinder let us write the equation of torque net torque on the cylinder I am taking torque about center about its center this is equal to 0 normal is passing through center n1 is passing through center and this mg is also passing through center so torque is only due to this friction and this friction torque due to this friction will be in the clockwise direction and torque due to this friction will be in anti-clockwise direction both the torques should be equal let us assume that radius is equal to r so fr is equal to f1r from here f is equal to f1 and we have to calculate minimum coefficient of friction between rod and the cylinder 
for the condition of minimum we can take the critical case when this f1 is equal to limiting i am taking f1 as f1 limiting and this f1 limiting will be equal to mu into n1 and this n1 we have calculated earlier that is mg by root 2 now from all these relations we can see we have now the value of n1 and n1 is mg by root 2 we have now the value of f and f1 both and both are equal to mu mg by root 2 so these are the conclusions from 1 2 and 3 if you see the variables then variable we have to calculate is mu and one variable is normal reaction if write the equation in horizontal direction for this cylinder then n will also come if you write the equation in vertical direction for this cylinder then in vertical direction the forces will be this f and this f is known the f1 component of f1 in the vertical up direction f1 is known in terms of mu and mu we have to calculate n1 component will be downward direction so n1 is also known and mg is also known so we will write the equation in vertical direction for the cylinder net force in vertical direction on cylinder this is equal to 0 so writing the forces in the vertical direction component of n1 will be vertically up sorry component of friction f1 will be vertically up and component of this normal reaction will be vertically down net upward force must be equal to net downward force so upward forces are f1 by root 2 upward force is f downward forces are n1 by root 2 component of n1 and mg for f and f1 we can put mg by root 2 so put mu mg by root 2 and finally we can find mu is equal to 3 by root 2 plus 1 so this is the final answer to the problem